I presented a model by Tib effectively where he bases training to failure on the neurological demand on your body. He level one is complex gymnastic and Olympic lifts, for example, a snatch or a front lever. And these exercises, according to Tib, should never be taken to failure. Level six and seven, the, the lesser neurologically stressor activities, Tib recommends failure for all sets. And he also says that these are exercises which are normally trained to higher rep ranges, more volume. Very simply put, the larger neurologically demanding exercises, which are really the major compounds, your bench press, deadlift, etc. Training to failure is defined as the point where the activated muscles are incapable of completing another complete repetition without assistance. Number one, load may be more relevant with lower loads because larger motor units may not be activated until failure is reached. With higher loads, higher threshold motor units are recruited almost immediately. May be preferable for single joint and or machine-based exercises. Training to failure with multi-joint and or complex free weight exercises may increase the risk of injury. Number three, recovery. Failure may not be optimal if the training program includes a high weekly training frequency because training to muscle failure slows down post-exercise recovery to, for 24 to 48 hours. If you have a higher frequency of training, i.e. you're hitting muscle groups more within one week, if you're using a bro split, then you're not using a higher frequency model. And therefore you may be using the idea of training to failure more within your weekly sessions. And lastly, age. Failure may not be warranted in older adults because older adults can have slower post-exercise recovery compared with younger individuals. 